non new students that is continue the problems next one is it's one of the multiple choice questions in your triangle abc which of the following are not true so the conditions are triangular conditions what are the given options are in way the these options which of these are not satisfy the conditions of triangular form so we have already studied one of the conditions of triangular law of vector conditions in algebra we are how to get adding the lines of the triangles is called as one of the triangular law of vector addition now by using the figure we can be adding the corresponding lines of the triangles now o is called as one of the initial point b and c are the terminal points therefore now it's going to add starting with in terms of a so one of the directed line is nothing but vector a b a b is one of the directed line segment after which moves on the positions of b b to c is also a one of the directed line segment therefore we are adding this two. vector a b plus vector b c so after this we come to the position of c but c to a is not having the direction but directions is along with the a to c therefore it's called as negative of a vector it's also can be written as e equal to vector a c that statement is already known that it's also called as one of the triangular law of vector addition vector a b plus vector b c is equal to vector a c now such a statements can be solved in the different forms of given condition now first we compare with each other that statement is not represented in the directly in any one of these results so therefore it's also can be written as vector a b plus vector b c minus let me take an as in the left hand side that is minus vector a c is equal to c vector a b plus vector b c minus vector a c is equal to c again we we'll compare it right? so first we'll let's consider the second result vector a b plus vector b c minus vector a c therefore the second statement will be true but in the given statement which of these statements are will be false so therefore the second statement is not false again then if it is also can be written as vector ab plus vector bc minus vector ac is also can be written as plus vector ca is equal to zero means one of the definitions of negative of a vector the initial and the terminal points are will be interchange is called as negative of a vector so in that line a is the initial point and c is the terminal point if these two points are will be interchange then the directions of the lines is also changes therefore so a and c are will be interchange is nothing but c to a so after that initial and terminal are changes if it is changes with the negative sign so negative into negative is nothing but positive so therefore it's another one of the result is vector a b plus vector b c plus vector c a is equal to zero that is also a true so that is one of the statement for the first result vector a b plus vector b c plus vector c a is equal to zero so first and second both are will be true so similarly so again comparing in the third and fourth now vector a b plus vector b c but vector b c is also can be changes in the negative direction it is also can be written as minus vector c b plus vector b c is also can be written as minus vector c b plus c is equal to c b then it's comparing with the last result vector a b minus vector c b plus vector c a is equal to c b therefore the last result is also true so therefore the first statement is nothing but third one vector a b plus vector b c minus vector c b so minus vector c a is not possible therefore the third result will be false so your option is third so first second and fourth are represented in the different forms of triangular law of vector addition so therefore the third results are will be not to true otherwise false statement similar the next one is if vector b and vector b are two collinear vectors then which of the following are incorrect again we'll just verify what are the statements are will be given 
which are not satisfied the conditions of collinium. Now, first we will talk about the definition of collinium. So, in which of the vectors are going to be called as collinear vector. So, if one of the definition is two or more lines are having in the same length, two or more vectors are having in the same line, is called as collinear. Otherwise, two or more vectors are parallel to each other. Two or more vectors are parallel to each other. It is also called as one of the collinear. So, we will just verify the definition. First one is vector B is equal to lambda times of vector A where lambda is some scalar. It is one of the definition of collinear or not. So, it is one of the definition of collinear. In yesterday classes we will have to discuss one of the problem for the verification or prove that of the given vectors are will be collinear or not. So, if any two vectors are collinear, one of the vector is lambda times of another vector. Either vector A is equal to lambda times of B or vector B is equal to lambda times of vector A. So, it means one of the vector is lambda times of another one is it is one of the condition for the collinear. Therefore, the first results will be true. Similar, the second result. So, vector A is equal to plus or minus of vector B. Now, such a result can be comparing within any one of these two results. Vector A is equal to plus or minus vector B can be comparing in the first result. Now, in terms of lambda, it is nothing but plus or minus 1. So, if these two results are comparing with each other, in place of lambda, it is nothing but plus or minus 1. Now, plus or minus 1 is called as one of the scalar number, either plus 1 or minus Minus 1 is one of the scalar number. Therefore, it is also one of the conditions of collinear. In place of lambda is represented for any scalar number. In numerical either positive or negative or the rational form. Therefore, plus 1 and minus 1 is also one of the scalar number. Therefore, vector A is equal to plus or minus means lambda times of vector B. It is another one of the definition for the collinear vector. Therefore, the second result is also will be true. Now, we will come to the last result. So, both the vectors vector A and vector B having in the same direction but different magnitude. So, directions are will be same but different magnitude. Now, such a vectors are called as parallel vectors. So, two or more vectors having in the same direction different magnitude. So, different magnitude is also will be called as one of the multiple of some scalar numbers. If comparing in any two vectors, if it is only changes with the magnitude, so such a magnitude is always one of the comparisons of the length between the given two vectors. Therefore, the fourth statement is also one of the definitions of collinear vector. So, then we will come to the third one. So, the respective components of vector A and vector B are not proportional. So, respective components means the coefficient of i, coefficient of j and coefficient of k are called as respective components. Or vector A and vector B are not proportional is one of the given statement. But according to the definitions of collinear, such a components are always proportional to each other. So, given one of the examples of the vector forms, vector A is nothing but 2i plus j minus k. This is one of the given vector A. And another one is considered vector B is equal to minus 4i minus 2j plus 2k. Minus 4i minus 2j plus 2k. Just we compare these two are will be collinear or not. So, according to the definitions or by using the formula for the collinear, if one of the vector is lambda times of another one is called as one of the definitions of the collinear. So, therefore, these two are comparing with each other in terms of second vector. Now, if it is possible to minus 2 as a common factor. So, after minus 2 as a common factor is nothing but 2i plus j minus k. So, it is these are the scalar components of vector A. Therefore, vector B is equal to minus 2 times of vector A. Therefore, such a vectors are called as collinear vector. These are in the form of vector B is equal to lambda times of vector 
करेंगे बट नाउ विल चेक विद अ दीस आर द स्केलर कंपोनेंट ऑफ द वेक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोपोर्शनल सॉल्ट इन द फर्स्ट वेक्टर 2 कॉमा 1 कॉमा माइनस 1 एंड इन द सेकंड वेक्टर माइनस 4 कॉमा माइनस 2 कॉमा 2 आर विल बी कॉल्ड एज कंपोनेंट स्केलर कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ वेक्टर ए एंड वेक्टर बी सो जस्ट विल चेक विद अ दीस आर प्रोपोर्शनल सॉल्ट So two is proportional to minus four. That can be written as two divided by minus four. Similarly, one divided by minus two is equal to minus one divided by two. So if all the ratios are nothing but same, therefore the collinear vectors are always proportional to each other. The respective components of any collinear vectors are always proportional to each other. But in the given statement. The conditions are not proportional. Therefore, the third statement is not true. So, which are the following sir? Incorrectness. Third statements of the given results are not satisfied with conditions of collinear. Okay. Next one. Next condition is product of two vectors. In general, so product means multiplications. Now. Numbers are multiplied with each other. These are represented in the form of any numerical numbers are get multiplied with each other. Such a representation can be written as one of the form is two cross three, and another one is two dot three. So both are will be same because product is nothing but six. So that is one of the multiplication of product of two numerical numbers. But in case of matrices, multiplication or product of two vectors can be divided into two parts. Product of two vectors can be divided into two parts. One of them is called as dot product. First one is dot product, and second one is cross product. First one is dot product and second one is cross product. So now what are we represented in the form of multiplications of two numerical numbers? First one is two cross three and second one is two dot three. So in case of scalar numbers, both are will be same, but in case of vector form, both are will be different. Therefore, these are the two types of product of two vectors. Now dot product of the two vectors is also called as scalar product. Scalar product of two vectors and cross product is also called as vector product. Vector product of two. These are the some two different types of product of two vectors. So first one is dot product, other one is also called as scalar product. And another one is cross product, otherwise vector product. So now first we we'll discuss what are the conditions of dot product of the two vector. Dot product is also called as scalar product of the two vectors. Now consider the two vectors, vector A and vector B. Both are will be coincident vector. O is the initial point. A B are the terminal points. A and B are the terminal points. O A is called as position vector of a point A with respect to O. It's denoted by vector A. And O B is called as position vector of a point B with respect to O. So it's denoted by vector. They form the given two vectors, vector A. And vector B are two non-zero vector. Non-zero means its magnitude is nothing not equal to C. So the definition of dot product, otherwise scalar product of the two vector, is defined by product of magnitude. Product of magnitude of two vectors. Between them, that is one of the definition.
equation are scalar product otherwise dot product of the two vector like vector a and vector b are the two non zero vector vector a and vector b are two non zero vectors then the product of the two vectors is defined by product of magnitude of two vectors with cosine of an angle between them now by using that figure vector a and vector b are the co initial vectors then angle between these two vectors is called as theta theta is a one of the acute angle between vector a and vector b so then the dot product of the two vectors is also denoted by a dot b dot product otherwise scalar product of the two vector is denoted by vector a dot vector b and it's defined by put up the definition product of magnitude of two vector so what are the vectors i will be consider then the magnitudes are multiplied with each other that is magnitude of a into magnitude of b so into is nothing but normal form either it presented in the dot otherwise it is represented in the scalar because so the cross product because magnitude is always one of the scalar magnitude of any vector is always scalar so scalar numbers are get multiplied in any one of these two result either it is represented in the dot product otherwise it is represented in the cross product they form between these two magnitude it's not necessary to mention either in dot or then in the cross but in these two vectors it is always represented only for the dot product vector a dot vector b is equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of b means product of magnitude of two vector with with cosine of an angle between them what are the angles are represented between these two vector can be combining with cosine of the function means cos theta therefore a dot b a dot b is equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos theta it's a one of the definition and the formula for the dot product or scalar product of the two vector dot product or scalar product is a one types of product of the two vector so dot product is denoted by vector a dot vector b and it's defined by product of magnitude of two vector with cosine of an angle between them they form a dot b is equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos theta it's a one of the definition and formula both are with this definition and formula for the product of the two functions so next will some basic properties of dot product of the two vectors to remember these points so first one is dot product means a dot b is always scalar dot product of the two vector is always scalar means solutions of the dot products are not represented in the vectors solutions of the dot products are not represented in the vector form solution is always in a scalar form second point a dot b is always equal to b dot a a dot b is always equal to b dot a means scalar product is commutative scalar product is commutative then third condition first condition is a dot b is always scalar so dot product of the two vector is always scalar second point is dot product of the two vector is always commutative then third condition is now theta is a one of the angle between vector a and vector b theta is an angle between vector a and vector b but how to find the solutions of theta when the vectors are the big given so how to find the solution or values of angles between these two vector when the vectors are 
will be given. So now by using the definition or formula for the dot product of the two vectors, a dot b is equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos theta. By using the definition, cos theta is equal to. So it means it can be solved in terms of cos theta. Cos theta is equal to vector a dot vector b divided by magnitude of a into magnitude of b. This is one of the formula to find the cosine of an angle between vector a and vector b. Otherwise, cos theta. To remember that formula. Then, fourth one. Now, the two vectors a and b are parallel to each other. So, what are the vector a and vector b are called as co-initial vector. Suppose such a vectors are parallel to each other. What about the condition for the dot product of the two vectors? Now, we observe the figure. If these two lines are parallel to each other, means if we separated real, sorry, initial and the terminal points. So, OA is one of the directed line and OB is another one of the directed line. Otherwise, such lines are coincide with each other. If these two lines are always having in the same initial point, suppose such lines are mutually joining with each other, what about the angle between them? What about the theta? So, it is always 0 degree. So, if the two lines are parallel to each other, otherwise coincides with each other, then the angle between the lines is always nothing but 0. So, therefore, the lines are parallel. Vector A is parallel to vector B, then theta is equal to 0. Now, theta is equal to 0, then what about the cos theta? Theta is 0, therefore cos theta is nothing but cos 0. Cos 0 degree can be written as 1. Cos 0 degree is 1. So, cos theta is nothing but 1, therefore a dot b can be written as vector a dot vector b can be written as magnitude of vector a into magnitude of vector b. That is one of the condition for the two vectors are parallel to each other. But in particular, put vector b is equal to vector a. Put b is equal to vector a, then the result is also can be written as a dot again b is nothing but vector a. Vector a dot vector a is equal to magnitude of a into again b is nothing but a magnitude of b a dot a is nothing but magnitude of a into magnitude of b but magnitude of a into magnitude of a is also can be written as magnitude of a whole square therefore a dot a is equal to magnitude of a whole square it's one of the formula to remember. So, if any two vectors are parallel to each other, then a dot b can be written as magnitude of a into magnitude of b. But in particular way, parallel vectors are equal to each other. In some of the cases, any two parallel vectors are equal to each other, then a dot a can be written as magnitude of a whole square. Then, next point is, any two vectors are perpendicular to each other. Whatever the condition for the given two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So, A is perpendicular to B. We'll observe the figure. Vector A and vector B are perpendicular to each other. What about the angle between them? Theta is nothing but 90 degree. So, if theta is 90 degree, then what about the cos theta? Cos 90 is nothing but 0. So, theta is 90 degree. Cos theta is nothing but 0. So, if cos theta is 0, then the product of scalar product of two vector is cos theta is nothing but 0. 0 into magnitude of A into magnitude of B is also nothing but 0. Therefore, vector A dot vector B is equal to 0. So, that is one of the condition for the two vectors are perpendicular to each other.
dot. So just to remember these points. First one is dot product of two vectors is always scalar. Second one is dot product of two vectors is always commutative. Third one is what about the solutions of cos theta? Cos theta is defined by vector A dot vector B divided by magnitude of A into magnitude of B. Fourth condition is if any two vectors are parallel to each other, then magnitude of A dot B is nothing but magnitude of A into magnitude of B. But in particular, if parallel vectors is an equal vector, then A dot A is nothing but magnitude of A whole square. And next condition is any two vectors are perpendicular to each other, then theta is nothing but 90 degree. So cos theta is nothing but 0. Therefore, the dot product will be C. So it's one of the formula for vectors are vectors are orthogonal to each other. So it's one of the important formula. So to prove that the given vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal to each other, then the dot product of the two vectors are will be C. So these are some properties of vectors.